Hello and welcome to another episode of Feminine Scope with Terra. I am Amanda Ezekwe and I'll be sitting in for Terra. A United Nations research as at September 2021 has it that there are 26 women serving as head of state or government in 24 countries. 10 countries have a woman head of state and 13 countries have a woman head of government. Nigeria, among many other African countries, is yet to have its first female president or a democratically elected female governor. In the Senate, out of 109 senators, only seven are females. And in the House of Rep, out of 360, only 22 are female. What are the challenges confronting women in politics in Nigeria? These and many more is our focus today on Feminine Scope. Our guest for today is one of the very few female aspirants vying for the councillorship position in the forthcoming FCT Area Council elections scheduled for 2022. Please join us after the break. Welcome back. There is established and growing evidence that women are least represented in the political sphere. Most countries, especially Nigeria, have not achieved this gender balance because of the least representation of women in politics. Our guest today on the program is Honorable Peace Chinon Sumachuku, a young female politician who is very passionate about women in politics. She is the social media strategist, African Democratic Congress, National Youth Council, and presently the councillorship aspirant for GWA Ward in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much. Looking at the statistics in women in politics in Africa, you know, Rwanda ranks the highest with 51.9%, South Africa 48.6%, and Chad, which happens to be the poorest country in Africa, ranking 15.43%. Now, coming back to Nigeria, the giant of Africa, 8%. Why is Nigeria having the worst rating of representation of women? And why is it difficult for them to aspire? Hmm. Thank you for that question. Talking about Nigeria being the giant of Africa. I'll start by listing out some key points, key challenges to why this is presently happening and why Nigeria is still backward. Number one, we'll start with the um, we'll start with poor access to education and also talking about um, patriarchy and also cultural beliefs. First of all, um, concerning the patriarchy, I've noticed that the male folks feel intimidated when women come out to run. They feel intimidated in the sense that if a woman is vying for this position, they feel like, ah, oh, she's going to be aggressive if she has attained that position. And then also women have poor access to education in Nigeria. And then lastly, the cultural beliefs. Presently, I have experienced a, a, a lot of cultural norms, especially in the north, due to the field the woman has no place when it comes to leadership roles. She has no business airing her voice or giving opinions that are beneficial to the society. The field she has, everything about her should just be to take care of the household do the chores and take care of the children. So those are one of the reasons why it has proved to be difficult for we to even ascertain 20% or 30% of this, of women representing in Nigeria, participating in politics especially, and leadership. Okay, now you talked about education of women. Are you saying that we don't have enough women who are educated that can vie for this um, Positions. No, no, no. There's a difference between going to school okay. and also having the knowledge. For instance, when you meet a young lady and you ask her, okay, what's happening in this country? They have been so reluctant about being involved in the governance of this country. They feel like ah, they have no business with politics. They don't want to be involved. So sensitization is supposed to be ongoing, like sensitizing the women, letting them know that yes, 
they need to be involved in politics. They need to be involved in the political affairs of this country. There is no sensitization on that. A lot of women have no knowledge about politics in this country. Let's say 80% of the women. Wow. Only few have knowledge and are aspiring to be involved in politics. Is it that they're not interested at all in politics? Now, talking about the education, poor access to education. Now, another reason why they are not interested in it is because of the cultural beliefs and the stigmatization that comes with trying to air out your views or getting involved in politics in Nigeria. That I have experienced firsthand. Now, the stigmatization... What do you mean by stigmatization? For Can you give us an example of something you have been through? Yes, being stigmatized. I have. Yes, as yes, especially on social media. I would um, I will refer back to an incident that happened a few days ago, where I was um, I was I actually did a live video and I had a lot of quotes and explaining to women, trying to sensitize them online on why they shall they should be involved in the elections, on why that their votes count and why they should aspire to be among the key changers in this country. And then I started getting negative comments and threats from wow. from some male folks that um, a woman has no business in being involved in politics that should just stick to to the doing kitchen. other things, the kitchen, <laughs> taking care of kids, going to the market. And I was like, are you serious? To the extent that one even had to send me threats in my inbox that they have been following me for a while and it is wrong, that it seems like I'm not ready to move forward, that I should, I should ask questions, I should dig deep on how the society treats women who are outspoken. That when a woman is proven to be outspoken, it shows that she has no regards for the male folks. That is, she's disrespectful, she's not a good wife, she's not a good mother. So they, they tend to see her as, um, they, they tend to be intimidated by her and they see her as a lesser human being. being. Yes. Wow. In the Senate, out of 109 senators we have just seven female senators and the house of rep out of 360 just 22 why has attempts um, to get women into leadership positions failed that is very very poor and a lot of research has been going on and i presently did an article on that on my social media because i'm um, talking about this this same issue why women are not being represented in the house of um reps and all that. I will blame the government. I will give 50% blame to the government and why? I will also give 50% blame to the women. So now, why, why would you... Okay, why. Let's hear now, it. starting with the government, they haven't, they haven't really been involved in sensitization of letting these women that they need to be, letting them know that they need to be among the key changers of this country. I haven't seen enough sensitization going on. Yes, they come on TV and they say, yes, there's a quota for it. There's 30% of, whereas in the background, a lot of political parties are not even following that quota. A lot of them are not following it. And I haven't seen any follow-up or measures done to achieve it. Like, they are just, um, um, there's this negligence when it comes to follow-up for that quota. And then talking about the women, why I am also blaming them is because they are scared, number one. They are scared, and there's also negligence. And I've noticed that women, women find it difficult to support women. I'm a woman, but this is something I've experienced let's say 70% to 30%. It's very rare before you see women support women. But then I've also come to conclude that this is something that we just have to be able to sensitize them and let them know that politics is not as dirty as they see it. The male folks has, has made it look like politics is very, very dirty, and that is the main reason why a woman shouldn't be involved. We need to let them know that if they do not come out to be among the game changers, to be among the key changers, to be among the lawmakers of this country, issues that 
they are facing will not be resolved. Because like the popular saying says, he who wears the shoes knows no where it hurts. Yes. yes. So we need to be involved. All hands need to be on them. But the women, you won't blame them. It is what they see. <laughs> if you say women are afraid, why can't the male folks, you know, come to them and tell them, you know, you can do this? Because anytime they want to go on campaigns, they actually look for women to help them. Now, that's telling you how powerful women are. Women are very powerful. Now, when it comes to campaign, that is another important aspect. When it comes to campaign, they are being used for votes, to get votes. And that shows you the power of a woman. If a woman walks out today and says she's going to pull 100 crowd, she's going to pull 100 persons, she's going to pull 1,000 persons or 2,000 persons, believe me, she will do it. And that's the reason why these male folks prefer to use us during elections because they feel like, ah, if this woman gets hold of this position, how are we going to get these persons to vote? Who is going to do the mobilization? Women are being used for mobilization, especially the market women. You see a woman that will come out today and as she's going to vote on the election day, she's asking her neighbors, are you not going to vote? Please call your children, call your friends, call your family. Ah, vote for this party. You see us campaigning. We do more of the campaigning, not even the male folks. Talk about women. We do more of the campaigning, not the male folks. And that is why they keep keeping us in that area. They want us to stick to that area because they feel intimidated. Imagine if this woman can pull this crowd and then think about her varying for this position. You don't know what you're going for. So that is one of the challenges. When um, the, the uh, elections are going on or when the campaigns are going on, do women go with them into the interiors where they campaign? Interiors how? Interiors into the villages because there are places that they'll be like, okay, let's stop here, you know, like seeing the chiefs and all that. Because most times there are places that women, they will tell you that women cannot go into. Yes, that one I have experienced it. Can you give us... Like, for instance, when you come during that um, campaigning um, um, period, the women, they will just want to sideline them when it comes to meeting these important persons. They will always want to sideline them when it comes to meeting these important persons because they feel, yes, this is where... These people should stop. We can take it over for there. But when it comes to reaching out to the masses, they feel the women are better. They should just stick to it. When leaders, when you're having your meetings, like in your leadership, the caucus, why is it that they don't give women influential positions where they are seen and heard? They give them positions like maybe women affairs and all why can't they give them positions like being a governor or even a president <laughs> women can do it why i let, let me take you back to during um, my sug days when i decided to run for um sug president when i stepped out and i decided to pick that phone there 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 was someone who stood up and said how can a woman be an sug president like what happened to being the financial secretary and the treasurer? So you have already been relegated to the background even before yes. they had your agenda. Yes, before they had it. They had already said, ah, no, that the SUG president is strictly for the male, but I can decide to be the vice. And giving you an option. The male giving me an option. You can imagine how painful it was then. And talking about this, that is the reason why grassroots politics is very, very important. Politics does, is not just about the government. It starts from the household. Now, let me take you back. Apart from the SUG experience I had, imagine being at home and your younger brother um, um, does something to piece you off or irritate you, and in the process of trying to scold that child who, is, who you are older than, your parents will look at you and say, don't you know that he's a boy? Don't you know he's a man? Why would you want to raise your hand on a man? So this um, stigmatization has already started in the household unknowingly. Now, these male folks, they grow up with the, with the mindset that 
no I'm matter, the man. No matter what, I am the man. You will see a 10-year-old that will look at his 16-year-old sister and be like, forget to oh, sister, I am a man. So, these are issues that are even happening in our household, but parents, a lot of persons are not even noticing it. So that is why grassroots politics is very, very important. And now when it comes to such, you always see it when it comes to having um, relevant positions in the society. The male folks will always want to sideline you. They will want to give you such positions because they feel like you are meant to be below them. You're meant to be at the back. All we need is your own support. But you shouldn't vow for such positions. Shouldn't be ahead. Imagine having like seven governors who are females in this country. Wow. I dream no, of it one of these days. I do. I've been having that dream ever since I was a child because I've been looking towards it. And I hope it comes true. Yes. I definitely, it in, will. in New Nigeria, it will definitely yes, come true. But where, where do you think um, sensitizing women about politics, where do you think it should start from? Okay. Apart from the home. You know, definitely girls, when they grow up, they tell you, oh, when you get to your husband's house, when you, not giving them the opportunity to express themselves in the home. Okay. So how can you put it together that, okay, this is where sensitizing the women should start from? It could actually start from the workplace. It could start from the church. It could start from the monks, whatever religion it is. Sensitization should get started in those places in such a way that they're having leadership programs, mentorship programs to be able to let these women aspire to be what they want to be. Yes, you can have um, a career ongoing, but then you should also be interested in the affairs of this country. A lot of women feel like, ah, there's no reason for me to be interested in the affairs of this country. You understand, after all, I'm going to get married, I'm going to have kids, I'll have to face my children. But no, from the workplace, from the office, even in, um, in the, in the um, government, there should be ongoing leadership trainings, mentorships. Imagine if they could incorporate these programs in schools, in primary schools, in secondary schools. It should be leadership trainings, mentorship programs. This could actually help with the next generation. It could actually help so they don't grow up with that mindset that ah, a woman's place is in the kitchen. Now, in the political space, when women assert their, their voice, you know, in party discussions, do they welcome them? Mm. For that, I feel they're not actually welcomed. They're Why not, do you say so? They're not welcomed in the sense that they're being intimidated by ah, a woman is giving um, such a beneficial, a beneficial statement to move the nation forward or to move this party forward. So most times, whenever she leaves that meeting, after she has voiced her opinion, they, 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 there's a tendency of them having another meeting and thinking about what she said, but they won't want to do that in the open. They want to do that in the open because they feel intimidated. So all they have to do is to think about it, but look for measures to make it look as if the opinion is coming from their own end. Are you actually talking from experience? Yes, I'm actually talking from experience. They will always want to make it look like, ah, this opinion is coming from their own end. So that's just it. Where do we see women in politics in 2023? 2023. Oh, God. Whenever I hear 2023, I start having this fire. I am really looking forward to 2023. Well, with the rate at which a lot of young ladies have started getting involved in leadership, mentorship programs, and politics, I am glad to say, come 2023, a lot of women will be involved in politics. Because as I speak now, ongoing sensitization from a lot of NGOs, a lot of um, leadership organizations are being put in place to start sensitizing the young ladies about elections 
not just politics but also leadership because we notice that apart from politics a lot of persons are being stigmatized in their workplace when they want to vary from positions or when they want to um, contest for chairmanship or something in their office space so it's not just about politics but they need to be sensitized, sensitized to let them know that a woman has a place in the change making room so that's it so i feel 2023 a lot of women will be ready in fact they are getting ready so by 2023 they'll be ready to move and out of curiosity most of the older women in politics do they have like um, a mentorship program for the girls who are interested in coming up in politics <sighs> talking about the older women are they accessible are they approachable uh, most of them are accessible most of them are not because most of them also have that mindset that a woman's place is in the kitchen even when they are certain those positions they are just there just for sure. So, right now, I won't really say that it's hundred percent that these older folks are accessible. Those women are accessible. No, I can't say that. But from experience, there are few who are accessible. There are few who I can approach for mentorship and tell them, "See, these are the challenges I'm going through. How did you do it during your own time?" But then there are some who won't even give you such um, audience. audience. So I think it's all about networking. We'll get there. All the ladies in different political parties, do they have like an umbrella they come under, like women in politics, where they sit and talk about moving the country forward aside their different political parties? Okay, I know of um, a group, Women in Politics in Abuja is in Nigeria. It's, uh, it's working because despite the fact I've been able to meet other ladies who are not just in my political party, they're in other various political parties and we come together to discuss, you know, and look for ways to network. So, but then we still need other groups, other organizations that can be formed, especially in the North especially in the north i notice you've been saying the north the yes. north the north what is so special about the north when it comes to women in politics okay in the north i feel they are they are so deep rooted in their cultural belief that a woman has no place in politics a woman shouldn't be outspoken i've experienced it especially um, early this year when I was trying to have like a conversation with some elderly women and then they looked at me, ah, this one that is like this, what's she trying to say? What's this lady trying to say? Shouldn't you be in school or shouldn't you be in your husband's house? Shouldn't you wow. be picking up your kids from school and all that? So I feel the north, because I've actually compared it, the north, the east and the west. The west, when it comes to the west, they are standard. They allow the females to be outspoken, to air their voice, followed by the East. But then the North, they still have a lot of work to do in the North because we need to let these women know that they can be able to make decisions. Wow. Talking about all this and, you know, it's really um, in the place for women to know how they have to be relevant in the political space. Now, why is the representation of women in politics very important, especially in governance and in the nation building? Okay. Talking about women, the, the, the level of importance in being involved in politics. Okay, as a woman, you don't expect a man to be able to, to do it all to tell it all, to be able to know these are the issues that are related to you. We need a woman who can be able to express her pain. This is what we are going through. A man cannot express your pain. Yes, he will see it and he will sympathize with you, but he's not able, he's not going to be able to express your pain and that is the reason why a woman has to be able to represent the women. Women have to be involved and 
be able to present these certain issues. Yes, this is what the women are saying. This is what the women want. This is what should happen. This is our issue. You don't expect a man to go out there and do and, and do it for you. As a woman, you need to be able to represent women. Let them know this is the issue that we're facing. So far, do you think women have been supporting themselves in politics? Because even outside politics, women are the ones who draw down their agenda. So in politics, do you think they have been supporting their fellow women? Ah, I wasn't really expecting that question. Seriously, because this is something that I've been avoiding. But then I will attend to it. Uh, talking about women supporting women, mm. the rate is 70-30. Let's say 70% don't even support themselves, but thirty percent will do. But then these seventy percent are those who don't have the right knowledge. They don't have the knowledge about um, um, politics. I won't blame them. They actually need to be sensitized. And then the thirty are those who have actually built that mindset. They actually want to be involved in in leadership. They want to be involved in politics. Talking about women supporting women. There's no, there's no balance. Same way we have been battling with gender inequality. That same way we're still battling with it. But you think there's any way it can be helped? Yes, there are ways. Like forming support groups? Those groups I'm talking about, those leadership and mentorship groups, once we start having that such trainings every month going on all around the country, having support groups that could um, come out and say, yes, we are going to support you, we are going to do this for you, we are going to train you, and having those mentorship programs is definitely going to help. It will help erase that mindset of um, there's no need supporting this woman, women can be aggressive. Just like um, a taxi driver telling me women are aggressive when they get hold of power. So we need to start erasing such mindsets. Yes. Women supporting women. When it comes to trying to raise or get them into politics, sometimes they don't even know where to start from. How do you think they can, you know, like join a political party without having someone like a godfather or godmother to hold them into it? I don't entertain God for that reason. There's no need for that. I feel when you have, when you have a voice and you are a, a, a man of the people, you're a woman of the people, you're able to assess the masses, you can go into any political party, be able to, to talk, it's just like networking. You network with people, tell them about this political party, why they should join. Now you're able to have a lot of persons on your side. There's so no need for your... God fatherism now. Nah. No, okay. Nah, 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 never. <laughs> so what are your last words? <laughs> so my last words, this is directed to, to the male folks. Please, I beg of you, try as much as possible to be able to support any female around you when it comes to ascertaining leadership positions. It is very, very important. And I need you to get that mindset of a woman's position is in the kitchen. Please, as, after watching this video, when you go to bed, try as much as possible to erase it. It's not helping at all. We sincerely appreciate you for taking our time to be with us. Our guest has been Honorable Peace Chinonso Machuku, a young female politician who is very passionate about women in politics. She is the social media strategist, African Democratic Congress, National Youth Council, and presently the councillorship aspirant for Jiwa Ward in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Finally, balanced political participation and power sharing between women and men in decision making should be fully encouraged in Nigeria. This will break barriers and help the society to develop and guarantee good governance. Well, that's how far we can go on the program. Until next week, bye-bye.